Shaman. What's, what's, what's going on, YouTube? Washington. This is what, 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 Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is your boy, Jamari Four here once again, and we are here to review the episode, I believe, six, this is, of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Now, I feel like it's been literally forever and a day or 300 years since I came on this camera, but let me tell y'all, real quick, I have just, I don't know why, I have just felt so exhausted. Like, all I do is work, come home, I eat my food, and I sleep. <laughs> like, I'm so for real, like, it just feels... Like whenever I come home, I just be like, uh, I just want to go to bed. Now I was I was supposed to literally record this review like four hours ago. I isn't that why do I feel like I'm dark? Am I dark? What the hell? Get up the camera. Hello. Child. Is this I hope this shit don't come up dark. I'm gonna be pissed. Do I need to scoot the fuck back or something? Hold up. Uh-uh, I don't like that. Oh well. I don't know if there's anything I can do. It's my light. Let me turn my other light on. Hold on. Well, I can't have this. That should look dim as fuck. Are we in the light? I, th I think we're somewhat in the light now. But anyway. <clears throat> uh, shout out to everybody who have been sending me messages in regard to, uh, you know, the whole Houston flood thing. You know, I live here in Houston and it was horrible. Okay. I ain't gonna spend too much time on it because, you know, there's been a lot of... Uh, you know, people have already discussed it, but experiencing it, it was a mess. Luckily, I wasn't directly affected because I was on my way home and it was like, when I was outside, it was like just starting. Like the rain was pouring down on the uh, Sam Houston Tollway, if you guys are familiar with uh, in the Houston area. And people were driving with their emergency lights on. People couldn't even see the uh, lines in the road. There was so much water, my windshield wipers couldn't wipe fast enough so it was just you know really careful to try to get home and you know the next day I saw that all the uh, streets were flooded the highways were flooded people were stranded a few people had died I think the death count was at like nine or ten people or it was crazy it's just I had never heard of anything like this ever happening outside of a hurricane so it was just crazy for it to just excuse me and start raining all of a sudden and it caused this much destruction but I'm okay. I think a lot of people were asking me, you know, was I all right? Because I hadn't posted any videos during that time. So, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You know, shout out to everybody who reached out to me. But anyway, let's get to this Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. <clears throat> so it starts off with Mama D trying to <laughs> set off this prayer and ask the Lord for guidance uh, before this dinner gets started, which is exactly what she needed because this was a high ass mess. She has this dynamic of she has her. And her children and her new her ex-husband about to be new husband I guess in the future and his mama at this table now I, I feel like scrappy is a little bit more indifferent compared to her sister as far as this whole her mom he's been getting that his mom getting back together with her ex-husband because I feel like he's kind of over it he doesn't like it but he's not gonna be you know He's not going to get in the way, I don't feel like, of her happiness. Jasmine's like, no, nah, fuck that nigga. <laughs> he ain't shit. He opportunist. He, you need to get the fuck up out of his life. He need to get, the, you know, get stepping. And, of course, Mama D is, you know, trying to feel like, oh, well, we're back together now. And, you know, it is what it is. And I'm sorry for what I did and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I know her, his mom doesn't like me because I sit in the jail. Now, I'm still trying to understand exactly what it is she says. So, she says that she didn't intentionally tell on him that he had drugs. She was calling the police on him because of what he said and did to her. And they just so happened to find his drugs on his person at that time. Is that how this is supposed to go down? I wasn't really sure. I didn't really follow or I didn't catch everything that she, uh, as to why she was kind of justifying what it was that happened because people were thinking, that, oh, she set him up, but she was saying, no, I didn't set him up. He just so happened to get caught with drugs. I'm not sure. Somebody explained that to me in the comments, but his mama, of course, you know, when you being a mama, you, you don't always see the best out of your children, usually. Like I said, in every case, usually you go see the best out of your children. You're going to always believe that what they did was the better thing and what they did probably wasn't as bad. But Mama D was trying to say, look, 
your son was doing was saying was treating me this way he was saying these things to me he did these things to me and look it is what it is <laughs> so but you know the mama just wasn't having it she was just like you know i just feel like there was no there was a better way you should have did it the way you did it and i just you know it took me a while to forgive you and so then it just became uh jasmine was like uh, getting into it with my Madi, like she, she's like he's an opportunist, and she was like, you know, I'm not a little kid no more. You can't whoop me, and she just wasn't with that whole union. So that whole dinner just went down the drain really quickly, and I'm not sure what it is that they're planning on doing. You know, later on, Mama D and Ernest met up again, and they tried to talk about marriage, and she was basically saying, look, you got to, you know, if this promissory ring is cute, but I'm gonna need you to upgrade this to an engagement ring, and. Uh, She's like, you know, we, I'm 51, you 52. Like, we ain't about to be postponing. He's talking about postponing shit. Like, look, we ain't got much time, okay? <laughs> you know, we at the, you know, last quarter end of our lives. So, we may be sitting there waiting around for too much, you know, shit. <laughs> but he, I understand what he's trying to do. I feel like he's trying to, you know, if he's going to do it this late, he wants to do it, you know, the right way, especially to kind of make up for what he did in the past. So, I kind of understand where he's coming from. But I understand where my buddy is coming from, too. He's like, because, you know, when niggas say, oh, I'm going to, you know, push this off and I'm going to do this, they usually push it off years. So she's just trying to make sure there ain't going to be fucking years that this, that this nigga decided to get his shit together. So that was my buddy and Ernest. I tried to go ahead and get everything about them out the way. Next, we go to this little quick clip about with Jessica, Prima Donna, and Dawn. And uh, Prima Donna trying to get her little thing together to get her corsets or waist trainers party event set up or whatever that's getting thrown by Dawn and you know Prima Donna just pretty much explains the whole situation about what happened with her the last episode with uh, Mimi Foss and <laughs> and Jazzy Faye and her talking about how Mimi had brought in some random bitch Tiffany Fox into my session and blah 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 Jessica as much as you tried to you know justify what you did you can't do that you was acting like a ratchet ass bitch in this professional ass meeting and when somebody who is trying to look for somebody to invest in and that's their first impression of you is you acting the ass in their office, that's going to turn somebody off. So don't try to sit there and be like Jazzy Faye was wrong for not trying to listen to your music. He was probably just turned off by how you handle the situation. Like if this is how you're going to handle a situation in a supposed professional environment now, I that's going to be off putting and that's not as marketable. So he's going to if he's going to try to choose to invest his money in something, he has to choose, his, you know, choose something that's going to actually benefit him. Like this is not a good look. So he had all the reason to you know, treat you the way that you did. Kind of just like, OK, this is what you're about. OK, next. So don't be trying to get mad. And then Mimi, I mean, yeah, that was a bad idea. I don't know why you decided to bring them both in the same session. If you wanted to bring them together, don't bring them in a business session. It seemed, it seemed like you would bring them out to dinner, invite them to your house for wine. You know, something, you know, less casual than, you know, a business session to me. Especially since you know they ain't really... Uh, Tiff, uh, not Tiffany, but Jessica was already like, I, I don't know if people had time to manage her. So she already had like a negative, you know, idea about her. So to bring her in was dumb. Or at least right then during a business meeting was dumb. Like that setting was not the right setting to introduce these two artists. So I understand her frustration with that. And you know, Jessica was mad about the Jessica not, uh, that Jocelyn had this party and didn't invite her. And you know they were trying to tell her, you told her that she ain't your friend and blah blah blah. So you know they're gonna have a nice little meeting of words later on in the season. So we get to Margot and Nico. Margot's hair still looks a hot mess. Her stylist just doesn't like her. And because she had this half-shaved head with this purple ponytail that was kind of stringy with split ends. And it just wasn't cute. She's almost cute. It's just she's never really getting it right on the head. She's just like always almost there. But never quite there. <laughs> um... <clears throat> And Nico's giving this whole spiel about, you know, moving to Atlanta and we want to move, you know, move on with our relationship and blah, blah, blah. That whole set, I really didn't give a fuck, to be honest with you. It's written down here, but I just really, God, I truly didn't give a fuck. I still feel like this shit is dark. I'm trying to go every light in this motherfucking dip, in this motherfucking room. Hold on. Because this shit, I hope this don't look like this on the actual video. So I'm going to be mad. Because I don't know why it's looking so damn dark. Is that bad? 
Girl. Oh well. I'm trying my best, y'all. Hope this auto light thing don't get me. Anyway. So where are we at? Ashley and Kirk in this you know, studio and they're talking about this tour. And uh, Kirk continues to be an ain't shit nigga as he's been since season one. Uh, well, actually, no, season one, people actually felt sorry for him, I think. And then it was season two when he was on that bullshit. But either way it goes, he was telling Ashley she shouldn't have said what she said to Rashida because it makes it look like he's cheating. I want to talk about that real quick because how are you going to blame her for talking about what you did to his wife? Now, I said, like, if you just were honest about everything that you did about getting the apartment and who you were hiring and why to your wife, that's the whole thing, meaning of communication comes in, there probably wouldn't be as big of a problem. Sure, it might still be a little issue or raised eyebrow here and there, but it still wouldn't be as big of an issue that it was. And she was like, well, it's not my fault that you lied to your wife. Like, you can't tell me what I should and should not say when this is the information that you're telling me. I'm not, you know, led to believe that this is supposed to be some sort of secret, you know? So I actually kind of agree with Ashley there. I'm like, she, you can't blame, get mad at me for saying stuff like, I didn't know that you were, that, that this is this is something that you were trying to keep a secret. And if that's, you, you worried about, you know, looking like you're cheating on your wife, it's probably because secretly in your mind you kind of are. You're just taking the premature steps towards it, in my opinion. <clears throat> but she was in there performing her little song. It seemed like it was cute, but it still kind of seemed like the song and, you know, the kind of artist that really ain't going to go nowhere other than this season of Love and Hip Hop. Like, it's not like she's going to really be performing and promoting this single outside of the show taping, you know? So... Where are we? They want to talk about this tour, and I'm just like, where are you gonna go? Like, what? How do you promote and start a tour with somebody who has no following yet? Excuse me. It seems to me that you would, you know, give her radio interviews, give her like little festivals or, <clears throat> or something. Because otherwise, I feel like when you go on tour, you promote saying, okay, hey, this person is gonna be performing then of course the pull from that person's name is going to draw in the tickets but if you don't know this person how is who's going to actually be buying the tickets to this tour i'm not really sure how or what venues that they're actually going for to try to promote her i didn't understand that but i'm uh, <clears throat> moving on let's see We're jocelyn and kalina talking about you know she's updating her on the whole stevie J situation and uh, Kalina's coming in telling her about what her husband's trying to do. Some guy that they worked with before slandered the money. And it turns out that that guy that they're talking about was, I forget what his name was, like Kenny or something? I can't recall. But uh, they're talking about that that's the same dude that uh, Stevie J and Benzino did their, their restaurant that they had last season that uh, Carly Rae got kicked out of. <laughs> and they had that whole fight between her and Benzino. Apparently that was started... Uh, by the same guy and then that went under some shady business deals happened between them so <laughs> she was like uh, we you know you already have your own instincts that this ain't a good idea I'm telling you from experience that we had some fucked up shit but if you still want to invest your whole life savings into, the, into this motherfucker and let your husband do that do you boo that's pretty much what Jocelyn was saying and uh, so Stevie J comes in from his 30 days. And of course, Jocelyn is happy because she wants the beef kick. And he basically is like, um, she's like, you know, I want to get married. I'm ready to have babies and all this other stuff. And Stevie J is like, oh, now you already know I'm sitting here having all this goddamn issue with child support. And you want to bring, what, child number six, seven? How many kids is Stevie J at now? I think he's at six, five, six, one of the two. He got a lot of kids. And here you come talking about you want another baby. And I got all these child support issues, girl. And you know they broke up too. Like I, I think that came out like last week or so that uh, Stevie J tweeted something about uh, I was cheated on while I was in rehab, and Justin said something about sucking my titties, and it was just okay. I guess they're not together anymore. So that should be interesting for if it doesn't happen later on in the season, next season <laughs> if they're not together no more. <clears throat> Excuse me. But he tells her I gotta leave again back to New York City to go to this court date. 
or what have you. And she's like, oh, no, you just got back. You didn't give me the beefcake yet, and you have to leave again. Oh, I'm so sad. Girl, all right. He's, I mean, it's just for a day. It's like it's just like a, I'll be right back. Like, I just got to go run and do this thing, and then I'll come right back. Like, she was acting like he about to just go back again for another 30 days. Uh, Kirk, Rashida, and Ashley, they, this whole staged ass argument in the parking lot, Kirk, uh, has Ashley in the car and she comes up talking about, uh, shit, what the hell are they talking about? I don't even, uh, what was Kirk and Rashida even talking about, child? I can't even remember now. But, oh, they were talking about the little, the tour or whatever. And I guess she was mad about, you gonna take this whole on, on, on tour and blah, blah, blah. I, I'm sorry. When, when Kirk and Rashida be arguing, that shit just, just be dumb. I just secretly tune that shit out. But Rashida has the idea that uh, I'm, uh, she wants to go ahead and be like, oh, you're going to be on this tour? Okay, you know what? You go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and auction off your shit. Since you seem it like a good idea to enter in my business profits to open up you uh, not open up, but have this bucket office and build this new house shit and take uh, tens of thousands of dollars out of my account? I'm gonna auction off your shit, bitch. If you're gonna take from me, I'm gonna take from you. So, yeah, Ashley and that, Ashley and Rashida had that whole little spat about her being too old to be acting this way, which is true. But, and both of y'all, really neither one of y'all have any room to talk about the other because technically you're both in the same lane. Yeah, Rashida may have had like a couple local club raps that were kind of cute for five minutes, but you ain't really that much better than Ashton Nicole, who's barely, you know, <laughs> you know, she's a newcomer. Y'all pretty much in, too close in the same boat to be talking about each other. So that's just how I felt about that. Uh, let's see. Let me move on down, move on down, move on down the road. So Jocelyn decides to surprise Stevie J for her for his court date, which is kind of all cute. I want to be there for my baby. I want to surprise him. I want to be by his side. Now, mind you, I felt like watching it. I felt like in real life, if that was this, <laughs> if that was uh, what would happen, that that might cause issue because I feel like Stevie J might or a regular person might feel like you stalking me for some reason. I don't know why I thought like. If somebody did that, they might get mad. Like, you follow me around, I try to tell you that, you know, this ain't, I ain't really want you here for better reasons. I don't know why. Random thought, I just felt like in a regular situation, somebody might be pissed that the person would fly out and surprise them because they, they might feel like they're being stalked. I guess that's if you're cheating or not. I don't know. Random thought. Pay me no attention. But that was kind of cute. He was like, oh, okay, well, you're here to support me. And she's like, I don't want my husband to be, you know, going through all this and I'm just chilling at home. So I'm going to come out here and support them. I was like, okay, that's cute, Jocelyn. That's cute. I can appreciate that. And so we end off the episode where Dawn is throwing this event for Prima Donna and she's having, you know, Jessica Dime do this runway for her corsets and things of that nature. And Mimi comes in because she says she was invited and of course, Nico brings Margo to this event, and Mimi has all this shit to say. Like, oh my god, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna try to do like a Forest Rocks does for her. Uh, love it, Bob Mimi uh, <laughs> impression. I'm sitting over here. I'm trying to enjoy this. Uh, I'm trying to support my artist, Miss Jessica Dye Peace, but I cannot distract myself from the freak show that is happening literally on the other side of this runway. Nico has kept his wife in hiding this whole time and he is just sitting over there trying to intimidate me and I just want absolutely no part of this. I want to be far away from them as humanly possible. <laughs> I can only hold it for so long before I start laughing. Uh, but yeah, I guess, and then Ar Arian just decided to slide in the fact that she brought her girlfriend here. Okay, where have you been, bitch? But anyways, it seemed like, okay, the whole staged ass scene with the cameras made me try to look like she was walking away, but Nico and Margo walked right on up and was like, hey, I want to introduce you to my wife. And Mimi gives this whole shady laugh and shit, and that's where the episode ends. And apparently next week they're going to get into it. So this should be interesting. But that was this week of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, y'all. Oh, excuse me. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Like, share, subscribe.